What is up, XRP community? Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me. I want to talk about the XRP Golden Cross, the effects it could have on the price, a clip of Brad Garlinghouse talking about a Ripple IPO, and then Jay Clayton, the former SEC chairman that began the whole lawsuit two and a half years ago, said some stuff on CNBC Squawk Box recently, and in, I'm quoting Brad Garlinghouse, and made his blood boil. And then a uh, development with Barclays, ISO 222, and Ripple. But first off, guys, does legacy finance know something that we do not know? The first Bitcoin ETF, um, Grayscale Bitcoin, and ProShares have had a surge in activity. And this is probably based off speculation. I have a hair in my mouth. That the Bitcoin ETF is going to go live soon. Um, Bitto, this Bitcoin ETF, traded $1.7 billion last week. It's second biggest week since its wild week one. So why is this ETF getting massive amounts of volume? Um, the most it's gotten in two years. Maybe they know something we don't know. The second biggest week, Grayscale Bitcoin did 800 million. And guys, this is one of the most important metrics to start the next bull run. If you don't know what this is, this is the Grayscale Bitcoin discount. So Grayscale allows institutional investors to buy Bitcoin. And it's currently trading below the price of a Bitcoin. At the worst part of the bear market, it was negative 40%, meaning you could buy a Bitcoin through Grayscale for a 40% discount. So ask yourself, why is institutional money, why are people with billions of dollars going to be buying Bitcoin off the spot market when they could buy it through Grayscale's trust for a 40% discount? We've seen a rally in the past few months. It's now at negative 10%. And in my opinion, this is the most important bull bear metric. You won't see another bull market until the grayscale Bitcoin discount is not a discount. Because like I just said, why would smart money buy Bitcoin, which is going to rally the whole crypto market, when they can buy it at a discount, about 12% right now, through grayscale? The grayscale discount keeps narrowing and maybe traditional finance knows something we don't know yet. Guys, if you want $41 for free, sign up with Webull, deposit one penny, you can get up to $3,000 in free stocks. Typically, you just get 40 to 300 bucks, but you're guaranteed $41 just for signing up and depositing one penny. Sell the stocks, close your account, buy some more XRP if you want. A link to Webull in the video description below. Make sure you guys smash that like button if you enjoy this content. It really does support the channel, and it lets me know that this is valuable content for you guys. So this is from Rohit Ku, Barclays in November 2023. We have a big month coming up. Typically, November and December are bullish for crypto. And all of these ISO implementations are happening in late November. Look what BarclaysCorporate.com has to say. They say it's worth noting that Bitcoin blockchain concept has now been amended in a number of ways. First, companies attempted to address weaknesses by forking Bitcoin. Then companies built their own versions constructed from the same concepts, addressing the technical weaknesses. Without going into a full description of the market, versions now exist on a spectrum from centralized current payment and clearing systems to fully permissionless systems with synonymous users such as Bitcoin. Alternative systems include Ripple, which uses both financial institutions and its own nodes at the core as the transaction processing entities. In Ethereum, which like Bitcoin, uses a global permissionless blockchain but solves some of the speed problems of Bitcoin, XRP and Ripple solve the speed problems of Ethereum and Bitcoin combined. And you see right here, system resiliency. They cite Ripple XRP as a near real-time movement validation and settlement. 99% of cryptos will go away in the future. The ones that will remain resilient, no pun intended, are ones that have product market fit. What problem is your token solving? And we all know XRP solves the cross-border payment problem very well. So Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse had his blood boiling today as the ex-SEC chairman Jay Clayton went on CNBC Squawk Box and said some crazy stuff. Based on an interview with CNBC in the middle of the second quarter this year, Clayton shared his views on the SEC's pursuit of legal action against various crypto companies. His comment specified that the regulatory authority should only seek out these companies if they have strong legal grounds. According to him, he believes the SEC should go through with the cases that are, that are sure to be successful if presented in court in trials that can withstand judicial scrutiny. Brad Garlinghouse responded in a shocking critique stating his feelings on the matter 
in his commentary on X or Twitter, he stated the hypocrisy is shocking. Take a listen. Let's take this to a, you know, a very high level on the regulatory side. What you're hearing from the leaders of the regulatory organizations is if we're not losing cases, if we're not being pushed back on by the courts, we're not doing enough. That, think about that for a second. That is a fundamental shift in how we as Americans view the role of the government. I, I don't want to be in a place where I know the government is going to bring cases they think they're going to lose. Imagine you're the person who is the subject of that case. Just now, we're talking about they, corporations. Yeah, to but, see if they can. And if, if they're not stopped, they're going to, yeah. Right, but this is an ethos now, which is yeah. you know, unless we're losing, we're not bringing enough cases, you know, that may be fine for private litigants against each other and, and think about it, but when you have the power of the state and you're... You're supposed to only bring cases and only make rules that you think. So Jay Clayton, on the last day of his tenure as the SEC chairman, brought this Ripple lawsuit that went on for the past two and a half years that ultimately Ripple, they're not out of the tunnel yet, but by all accounts, they've pretty much won. Um, XRP is not an unregistered security. But the hypocrisy and the irony of the guy that sued one of the most, if not the most legitimate crypto company in the USA, Ripple, arming innovation holding back technology that really can solve a lot of problems in the financial industry describing sec chairman gary gensler as his ethos is deeply un-american if we're not losing cases we aren't suing enough businesses this came from cameron winklevoss absolute absolute hypocrisy disgusting to see and listen to this clip right here of brad garlinghouse talking about a ripple ipo what happens, you've spoken, maybe an IPO, right? That might be coming. Well, it, the Securities Exchange Commission has to approve an S1 in order for a company to be public. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we go, trying to go public during that time doesn't make a lot of sense. But you know, look, Ripple has uh, grown into one of the leading crypto companies out there. Uh, I have said publicly before that I, I didn't think Ripple would be the first public crypto company, nor would it be the last. There are a few that have already gone public. There are a couple that were announced as SPACs that have gotten delayed. I don't know. This and the goal of Ripple is always to go go public. I think right now you can buy shares through a company called Linkto, but I'm, I'm not an expert on that. I wouldn't advise that. I need to do more research on that. But it's just a matter of time before Ripple does go public. They have too much uh, market share. And once XRP does get scaled up and once there is more regulatory clarity worldwide, um, it's just eminent. XRP, we've seen a little bit of a rally with Bitcoin going up, sitting at about 55 cents. If you guys need a spot to get XRP or Flare, I recommend Uphold. You can find a link to Uphold in the video description below. And XRP has found its golden cross once again. The XRP chart recently exhibited a technical pattern, caught the intention of many investors and traders. The sacred golden cross, okay? That is when the short-term moving averages and the long-term moving averages coincide. For those unfamiliar, it's when a short-term moving average, such as the 50-day moving averages, crosses above a long-term moving average, meaning that you're starting to see some upward mobility in the short term. Typically, it suggests a potential bullish breakout, often leading to higher asset prices. Now, XRP did see this golden cross a few months ago and nothing played out. Doesn't guarantee that there is going to be um, a massive spike in price right now. But when you're looking at assets and you're looking at something you want to buy, a golden cross is something you want to see on a chart. It's a bullish thing, not a bearish thing. And look at this great thread here from uh, Flip the Chain. There's a 30 second clip at the end. But Ripple Research had XRPL is the perfect blockchain for central limit order DEX because the transaction fee is almost zero. This means the entire NASDAQ and SP can be moved to XRPL by tokenizing stocks. Talked about tokenization a lot. In the future, you won't be buying stocks on stock exchanges, you'll be buying tokenized stocks on decentralized blockchains. Now look at all these uh, developments of companies. Medico was acquired by Ripple, it was quite strategic. With this acquisition, Ripple can off offer services like trading, tokenization, staking, smart contract management, and asset custody. These portfolio of services shall be good enough to mitigate or to migrate the stock trading securities and derivative markets to the XRP ledger, which would be massive. That's hundreds of trillions of dollars. Citigroup collaborated with Medico in developing institutional digital asset custody indicates the vast potential of securities tokenization, a future, future multi-trillion dollar business. 
Since Medico is now Ripple, these multi-trillion dollars will flow into the XRP ledger, pushing the price of XRP up. Sologenic, a decentralized exchange built on the XRPL, uses the Saxo trading system for asset trading. Saxo Bank and Medico, get this, are ISSA, International Securities Services Association members. This includes giants such as JP Morgan, the Federal Reserve Financial Services, Abu Dhabi Securities Exchange, and SWIFT, some pretty big names. Given the influence of these members, there are high chances of transitioning the stock trading, securities, and derivative markets to the XRP ledger. Recently, Hong Kong's Monetary Authority selected Ripple to participate in its eHKD pilot program. This program investigates various use cases including payments, tokenized deposits, settlement of Web3 transactions, and tokenized asset settlements. In partnership with Fubon Bank, Hong Kong, Ripple plans to demonstrate a unique use case involving real estate asset tokenization and equity release using EK eHKD. Additionally, the introduction of XLS30, the automated market maker, integration into the XRP ledger, and Sologenics IDO launchpad designed to assist developers and startups on the XRP ledger. These are both developments that will help transition multi-trillion dollar stock trading, securities, and derivative markets to the XRPL. Take a listen. And one of the reasons we talked about is that scalability problem of uh, blockchains that the cloud-based Texas cannot really scale well on public blockchains because of the higher transaction fee. Well, the transaction fee on XRP Ledger is almost zero, close to zero. So it's really, really uh, possible for even the cloud-based Texas to thrive on XRP Ledger. So Who likes paying fees? No one likes paying fees. And that's one of the beauties of the XRP Ledger. The fee is practically zero. And the throughput is, is through the ceiling. You guys made it to the end of the video. Comment utility shall win in the comment section below. When you watch the full video, it supports the channel a lot. So let me know you're a loyal supporter by commenting utility shall win in the comment section below. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Happy uh, early Halloween. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Until next time.